Hi and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Patterson. Rescue bracelets help Volusia County's Beach Safety Division reunite children and parents. Turtles nest early on Volusia County beaches and then later on in the show, Community Information Director Dave Byron chats public transportation with his guest, Votran General Manager Steve Scherer. Those segments, news and more coming right up on Volusia Magazine. Stay tuned. On a busy beach weekend, it's not unusual for a dozen children to go missing temporarily on Volusia County's beaches. Children can get lost on the beach because of the crowds, or they may be pulled northward by the current. Even if you're watching them carefully, a small distraction can cause you to lose track of your child quickly. During the 2013 summer season, 134 missing children were reported to Volusia County lifeguards. Fortunately, lifeguards located the children and returned them safely to their happy parents. In most cases, the child asks the lifeguard for help, but sometimes they're too young to describe their parents or the vehicle they arrived in. It may take lifeguards a few minutes to a few hours to find those parents. To speed up the reunification process, Volusia County's Beach Safety Division will be introducing new rescue bracelets in the coming weeks. One of my officers, Officer Sasha Medina, came to me uh, one morning and, and said she had an idea of, of how we can reunite children back with the parents. We, we struggle with an issue on the weekends and the holiday weekends when it's really busy down here. We struggle with the fact of children get separated from the parents. And we go and it's very stressful for our guards and our, and our officers trying to reunite these people back together. So Officer Medina came in with an idea of, of a bracelet and she actually came up with an acronym called RESCUE, reuniting everyone safely and quickly. I've actually seen it be used before in other similar life-saving agencies and thought that we would be able to benefit from the use of this bracelet as well. This is also going to benefit elderly people suffering from Alzheimer's, dementia, or some other adult mental illness um, that sometimes may walk away or get separated from the party that they're with as well. The waterproof disposable bracelets will be given to parents at the toll booths and lifeguard towers. Parents are asked to write their child's name and their cell phone number on the bracelets for quick identification and notification. Last year um, in the summer of 2013 from Memorial Day to Labor Day we had approximately 134 documented incidents of uh, children, lost children being separated from their parent or guardian. Um, implementing this program will help alleviate the time, decrease the amount of time the child is separated from their parent and help us focus on other priority calls such as water rescues and law enforcement calls. For information about the Beach Safety Division you can visit volusia.org slash beach. Turtle nesting season officially starts May 1st, but that didn't matter to the leatherback turtle that nested April 3rd in New Smyrna Beach. The nest near the Pompano walkover was found by a member of the Ecological Associates, one of the county's turtle monitoring contractors during a pre-season survey. Daily surveys begin May 1st. In the meantime, Ecological Associates will continue to do occasional surveys and Volusia County Beach Safety Ocean Rescue will also keep an eye out for nests during daily management of the beach. While April 3rd is early to find a turtle nest, it's not unheard of for turtles to nest this early. Well, statewide, the nesting season actually starts a little sooner in south counties, um, south of Volusia. So it's not, it's not unheard of, but it is unusual for Volusia to see one this early. Volusia County manages and enforces the County Sea Turtle Lighting Ordinance. The county works with property owners throughout the year to reduce artificial light on the beach. At night, females emerging from the ocean to lay eggs prefer dark, quiet areas to nest. And now's the time of year to start thinking about the regulations that are enforced throughout the nesting season. Um, the biggest one is our sea turtle lighting ordinance and that's regarding any lights that are visible from the beach. We want to make sure that those lights are shielded or directed away from the beach so that they don't disrupt turtles that are trying to, to nest and turtles that are emerging from the nests. Um, because lighting can be distractive and lead them into the wrong direction other than the ocean or, or where they're trying to make their nest on the beach. 
For more information about Volusia County's sea turtle program, you can call 386-238-4668 or 386-238-4716 or you can just visit VolusiaSeaTurtles.org. For questions about lighting, you can call 386-238-4773. Although the annual auto, boat, or trailer tag renewal can be done by mail or online, many motorists have to go to a county tag office for this and other registration or title transactions. There can be a wait, and for some people, it's difficult to visit a tag office during normal workday hours. That's why the county contracts with Auto Tag Management Group. It's a Fort Lauderdale, Florida private motor vehicle tag agency. Taking action at a recent meeting in DeLand, the Volusia County Council extended an agreement with the company as an alternative to the county's auto tag offices. While the county is not charged for these services, the vendor does charge a convenience fee for its services to customers. In addition, those charges required by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. The convenience fees range from $2.19 for a simple auto tag renewal to $9.83 for more complex title transactions. The private tag option has proven a valuable adjunct to the County Revenue Division's normal office operations, particularly for institutional customers such as car dealers. The private company, which has Saturday hours, has locations in Deltona and South Daytona and does more than 100,000 transactions per year. Often the wait time in the private tag office is less than it is in the county's tag office. The county council's action extended the contract through April of 2015. For more information, you can go to the county's website, volusia.org revenue. Hi, I'm Deb Dennies with the Volusia County Council, reminding you that there are more than books at the public library. Volusia County's public libraries are branching out to keep pace with our patrons' changing needs. And while books are still the number one draw, more and more patrons are using other services such as personal use computers, downloadable audiobooks, and free databases. Our libraries also offer a variety of educational classes. Visit volutialibrary.org to see what our libraries have to offer you. More than 200 public transit workers were in town recently for a statewide rodeo competition. No horsing around here. Joanne Magley has more on this driving and skills competition in this week's Volusia Here and Now report. For the second year in a row, Votran, the county's public transit agency, hosted the Triple Crown Rodeo. That's spelled R-O-A-D-E-O, -E recently at the Ocean Center in Daytona Beach. The Mega Rodeo is the second statewide rodeo to merge the skills competition for fixed route bus operators, paratransit bus operators, and maintenance technicians. Bobby Westbrook is the transit operations administrator for FDOT and the chairman of this year's rodeo. The uh, Department of Transportation and the Florida Public Trans uh, Transportation Association and partnership uh, put this event on once a year. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to uh, bring our technicians and our uh, drivers together to compete in an event that demonstrates the uh, skills uh, that they've learned through various training classes that we've had throughout the year. The vans are tight, the cutaways are a little wider, and obviously the big bus is a lot wider but the course is currently set up for van. The bus driving obstacle course was set up in the west lot of the Ocean Center. And while I've never driven anything larger than a minivan, I thought I'd test my skills behind the big wheel. This is a challenge maneuvering these tight obstacles. Left a little more. Oh, I took out some cones back there. Okay, where am I going now? Next, we're gonna pull into the curve on this yellow, oh, the yellow my curve. Goodness. What is your curve? have your front tire like about one foot away from hitting the curb. And even the professional bus operators thought the course was challenging. Difficult, 
Not easy at all. I really thought it was going to be easy until I got out there. It was really not that hard. I mean, not that easy. It's not as simple as you think because most of these obstacles are only within like four to six inches of your wheel wheels. So the cones, I mean, making your turns, it's kind of hard to make them turns unless you do it just right. Operators navigate a course designed to test their driving skills and mechanical teams troubleshoot malfunctions to demonstrate their knowledge of the vehicles. Knowledge of safety regulations and equipment personal appearance, and past driving records also are components of the bus operator competition. As you write your notes, it doesn't have to be in order for your defects noted. Each event is a timed event, and uh, there's a preset number of defects that are planted in uh, each one of the modules, and the mechanics uh, compete to see who can, who can find all of the planted defects and who can do it in the fastest amount of time. Both the mechanics and the drivers look forward to this event. Uh, we, we have found that uh, uh, they work extremely hard throughout the year trying to sharpen their skills uh, so they can come to this event and compete. Botrans General Manager Steve Shearer says this event is a great example of bringing a meeting home. It's, it's great to be able to bring all these folks from, from around the state of Florida. I mean, this is a statewide event. So we've got people coming from, from all, all areas of the state, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to expose those people to uh, Daytona Beach and Volusia County as a destination maybe, with, maybe they'd like to come back to. For Volusia Here and Now, I'm Joanne Magley. The state championship winners will compete in the International Bus and Maintenance Rodeo in May. The paratransit winners will compete in the Community Transportation Association of America National Rodeo in June. Where does Volusia County rank in the 5th Annual County Health Rankings and Roadmaps Tool released by the University of Wisconsin and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation? Well, health reporter Stephanie Strong brings us this report from the Volusia County Health Department. According to the County Health Rankings, Volusia County ranks 43 out of 67 counties for health outcomes and 32 out of 67 counties for factors impacting health. And that was the topic of WNDB Radio's Florida Lifestyle Show with Judy Mercer. One of the factors that uh, really is improving is health behaviors, folks taking personal responsibility for healthy nutrition, uh, physical activity, uh, avoiding smoking, avoiding binge drinking. So that factor exact, is actually improving over the last five years, probably because of all the efforts we've made um, to try to get the word out about the importance of being healthy before uh, being sick. And as we looked at the study that just came out from the county and the health department and also our local community health needs assessments, I see a lot of uh, similarities, a lot of synergy there, a lot of the same determinants that came out he mentioned the education, socioeconomic conditions, and it's great to hear that healthy choices are improving, and we've been working hard uh, towards that. The health of the community is broader than just your physical health, but they're interrelated. We were talking earlier about kind of this vicious cycle. If you're not healthy, you're less likely to be employed, and if you're not, li if you're not employed, you're less likely to be healthy, and you get into that cycle. So our challenge as healthcare providers is how do we get people uh, focusing on this, this broader health issue. I think the key really becomes access. And I think my concern about this report is that we have great hospitals. We have a great health department. But for some reason, we've got to figure out how to get the people who are, and I don't mean any disrespect, but waiting down the table. We've got to, we've got to get those people engaged, and that's the hardest part. Uh, some of our neighborhoods are particularly deprived. We talked about the lack of education, begetting a lack of job opportunity, and that all impacts health. And how can we as healthcare system, who are really specialized in disease care, um, help the health of our community overall? Uh, that's our challenge. Because much of what affects our health happens beyond medical care, the rankings underscore how important it is to build a culture of health 
where getting healthy, staying healthy, and making sure our kids grow up healthy are top priorities. The Florida Department of Health in Volusia County is actively taking steps to improve the health of residents by joining forces with community partners. One example is Healthy Volusia, a partnership that is actively involved in improving the health of Volusia County and has identified two priority areas by focusing on obesity and access to health care. For more information about the County Health Rankings, please visit countyhealthrankings.org. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Stephanie Strong, Public Information Officer for the Florida Department of Health in Volusia County. If you have any questions about this or any other health-related issues, you can always log on to volusiahealth.com. Well, let's head into the studio to join our very own Community Information Director, Dave Byron, with his guest, Votran General Manager, Steve Scherer. Well, thanks, Amber, and hi, everyone. SunRail commuter trains start running through Volusia, Seminole, and Orange Counties May 1st. For the county's Votran public transit system, that means new service to the SunRail station in DeBerry. Today, we'll discuss Votran's role in SunRail, and we have with us in the studio today, Steve Scherer. He's Votran's general manager. Steve, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you today, Dave? Hey, thanks for being with us, Steve. I'm doing fine. Uh, you know, it's been years and years of fits and starts and ups and downs and so forth and so on. Uh, SunRail is a reality, starts May 1st. Again, Steve, for those folks that may not be aware of SunRail, um, give us your description of SunRail. Well, SunRail is a new commuter rail line that, uh, that will operate between uh, Volusia County and Orlando. Um, it's going to operate Monday through Friday, so uh, there's no weekend service right, uh, right now. But it's uh, intended to be a, another commuting option for people who currently uh, travel I-4 during uh, the morning time and the afternoon time to right. go back and forth from work. Um, so so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a new commuter rail line to give other folks an option and uh, help uh, uh, rescue them from the, the I-4 traffic that they, that they experience today. You know, Steve, I, I want to stick with that point just for a second because this is brand new service and a, a lot of people, uh, you know, when you say train uh, service, they, they think of, uh, they may think of Amtrak service, they may think of downtown, you know, link service or whatever it might be. But this is service specifically designed for commuters who are currently driving to and from, as you say, uh, Central Florida jo to jobs. That's correct. That's correct. It's no, a, no weekend service. No, no service to the Magic Games or any of that sort of thing. It's daily service aimed at people who work during the days. That certainly, that's the intent. And uh, there'll be, and because of that, you'll see uh, when SunRail begins operating on May first, that there'll be uh, a higher frequency of, of service during peak travel times. Right. So, so those early morning uh, trips and those late afternoon trips will be provided much more frequently. So sure. they'll be operated on a 30 minute frequency mm -hmm. versus off peak hours or the midday hours where uh, the train schedule will, will then drop back to a two hour frequency. For, uh, for Volusia County and Volusia County's part in SunRail and the County Council has uh, committed in excess of $80 million over 30 years for their partnership in SunRail. For Volusia County initially as SunRail gets started there's one station and it's in DeBerry. Um, wh where does Votran fit into this picture with this DeBerry station? Well, Votran will provide a feeder bus service to the station. Mm -hmm. um, so what that means for us, we currently don't provide, there are no current routes that operate uh, and can get people to the station. Right. So all the service that's going to begin May 1st is new service. Uh, we'll actually operate uh, four different routes. Uh, these routes are all funded by uh, the Florida Department of Transportation. So. The funding that we received to operate these routes, uh, we basically backed into the schedule to, to determine how much service we could provide with the money that we were receiving. Mm -hmm. um, and what we determined uh, over, over years of, of planning, quite frankly, uh, with, uh, with the input of West Volusia Cities, uh, Volusia County, of course, uh, and the different partners involved, uh, we, we created two express routes uh, that will operate to the station, one from the DeLand uh, area and one from Deltona area, mm -hmm. and then two other uh, feeder bus routes that will operate using uh, existing Votran bus stops. So the express routes, of course, will have very few stops right. in between origin and destination, and uh, the two other routes 
we'll have uh, quite a few more stops that will allow folks uh, to pick up that route pretty much anywhere along the way. You know, Steve, uh, the county council, uh, you know, asked uh, in a recent presentation uh, that you made to them uh, how convenient it was going to be or could people from Daytona Beach get to the SunRail station on Votran? And, and, and honestly, the answer is, is not practically is not practically uh, given the amount of funding that we that we have right now to provide feeder bus service to the stations uh, it just uh, isn't something that we have the funding to do uh, we worked closely with with uh, the Florida Department of Transportation in our planning of the routes and uh, provided a variety of different options uh, for for service that we would be able to provide um, and uh, an express or a route uh, designed to go from East Volusia to the, the train station in DeBerry uh, just wasn't one that, uh, that FDOT elected to fund at this point. Right. Of course, I, I think the assumption, and correct me if I'm, if I'm not correct, but I think the assumption can be made that this service, this train service, um, is focused on people that are already commuting. So that assumes that they, they right now have some form of transportation and it's not usually not public transit. Is that, is that a good assumption? Um, I'd say that's a pretty safe assumption. Obviously, the majority of people that already commute between uh, Volusia County and, uh, and areas south of us, right. uh, those folks are driving or mm -hmm. they're carpooling. Um, there are a good number of people that, that currently use uh, the, the Route 200 commuter link uh, service that actually operates between the Saxon Road park and ride lot and uh, downtown Orlando, right. um, those folks uh, are used to using public transportation to make that commute. But for the most part, uh, the people that are making that trip every day are driving their cars. Well, let's, let's stick with that Route 200 for a second because that's a question that's come up quite frequently. Uh, again, for folks that don't understand, Route 200 is bus service, as I understand it, mm -hmm. between the park and ride lots, as you just outlined, in Volusia County and into uh, Seminole and Orange Counties, correct? That's correct. Yes, it's a it's a route that's operated by Lynx, right? Um, and it and it picks up at uh, in Volusia County at the uh, the Saxon Road park and ride lot. So what happens to this uh, service when SunRail starts? Well, when SunRail starts, uh, there there'll be no more uh, need for the Route 200 because it would then be a duplication of service and it would compete directly with SunRail. Um, so those folks. Uh, through, through efforts, through Votran's uh, uh, customer service department, marketing department, uh, we've been reaching out to those people that currently use Route 200 uh, through signage uh, at the park and ride lot, as well as uh, individual contacts for the people that we have that information on. Uh, we've reached out to them and let them know that, that as of May 1st, that Route 200 will no longer operate, and they should uh, consider their their options, uh, one of which obviously is SunRail. I know the County Council has approved some money, uh, Steve, uh, for the integration of the fare boxes between Votran buses and, uh, and the SunRail service. Um, tell us how this is going to work in the integration between fares on SunRail and, and fares on Votran. Well, currently, uh, when, when SunRail begins on May 1st, uh, the, the fare media, the, Sun, the Votran fare media will not be uh, compatible with the SunRail trains. Okay. Um, and the reason being, uh, we, we looked at that uh, coming into to this process over the past uh, several months and, and, and years, quite frankly, and uh, the money available to, to improve Votran's uh, fare collection equipment, just there wasn't enough money to, to upgrade our system to be ready May 1st. To, uh, to have one seamless fare media. Okay. Um, so basically, if someone pays a fare on a Votran feeder bus, uh, the fare would be $1.50. Now, they would pay that fare on the Votran feeder bus. Whenever they get off the Votran feeder bus at the DeBerry train station, the, the bus operator is going to issue them a, a transfer that's going to basically allow them to board the SunRail train for free. Okay. Um, so when they get to the train station, they'll go to the, to the station, to the platform, uh, they'll go to the to the ticket vending machine, and they'll place that transfer in the ticket vending machine, which will then allow them to to uh, purchase their uh, fare for SunRail. Okay, so let's say uh, I'm a Deltona resident, and I take the uh, Votran feeder service uh, on, uh, you know, uh, to the SunRail station, and then I'm going to Orlando. Uh, what am I looking at in terms of a total fare 
from when I get on the bus in Deltona to when I get off, let's say, in downtown Orlando. Okay, so when you board the bus in Deltona, you'll pay a fare of $1.50, okay. the Votrans standard uh, cash fare. Mm -hmm. You'll pay the $1.50, that'll take you uh, to the DeBerry train station. You'll be issued a, uh, a transfer right. with, from the Votran bus operator that you can take to the ticket vending machine on the station platform. Uh, then you'll be able to, to board the SunRail train for free. Okay. So, to be clear, everybody that, that rides the Votran feeder bus to the train station will be able to board the train at no charge. But they've already, theoretically, they've already paid for it. I mean, they paid right. $1. fifty to get on Votran. Right. Um, so the normal boarding charge is $2. If you, if you drive your car to the station and you park and you go get on the train, you'll pay okay. $2. You use the feeder bus, you, that, that fee is waived. So then SunRail's fare policy is designed in zones. Right. So each zone that you cross, there's a $1 charge. So they didn't pay anything to get on the train. If they're traveling to, to, to downtown Orlando, then they'll cross two zones. Right. So they'll be required to pay $2 uh, to, to finish that trip uh, to Orlando. Okay. So they'll pay one fifty to board the, tra the, the Votran feeder bus, and then they'll pay $2 in zone charges. So okay. essentially they'll pay a $3.50 one-way fare uh, to get to their, to their final destination. All right, so let's be clear. Let's say you don't, you don't take uh, Votran. You go to the rail station and you park. Mm -hmm. and you get on SunRail and you go into Orlando, what is that going to cost? $2 to board the train, right? plus $1 for each zone that they cross. So it's $4 to it's get over? It's going to cost them $4. Okay, and that's one way, that's not, one way. Not, not both ways. That's correct. All right, now what about the uh, parking lot at the uh, SunRail station? Is there going to be any parking fees there? There are no parking fees at the SunRail uh, station in DeBerry. So okay. if a commuter uh, wants to park their car there instead of driving I-4, then they can park there for free. Uh, that, uh, that parking lot has ample parking spaces, uh, so there should be uh, uh, plenty of space for a, a good number of people to park their vehicles there. So, okay, Steve, for uh, people that might want to get more information, not only about SunRail, but about uh, Votran and, and how you plan to serve uh, the SunRail station, how do people get more help? Well, the best place to get information uh, about Votran and the service that we're going to provide to SunRail is at votran.org. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, our, that's our new website. Uh, it's improved with uh, some great rider tools, uh, some new route tracker and uh, trip planning uh, uh, resources are available there. So uh, great information at votran.org. Uh, there's plenty of information ab about SunRail specifically uh, at sunrail.com. Uh, there's also links on Votrans' right. website that will take you directly to the SunRail website. Well, Steve, I want to thank you for sharing the information today. Uh, SunRail starts May 1st, and uh, looks like you guys are ready. We're doing our best. We're looking forward to it. Our guest today is Steve Scherer. He's Votrans' general manager. And with that, Amber, we'll go back to you. Thanks, Dave, and thank you for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about the show, you can feel free to give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here, or you can log on to volusia.org and click on the News tab at the top of the screen to find us. Incidentally, you can find the County Council's meeting calendar there too. In fact, you can use volusia.org to find out about meeting dates, workshops, topics of interest, activities, and how you can become involved. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today. It's Volusia County Government's weekly public radio program. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Patterson. Have a wonderful evening.